Hey there everyone, it's Elmarie here, call sign KJ5LXB, and for today's video we're going to be diving deep into APRS with the Yaesu FTM 510D. We're going to talk about what it is, how to set it up, and we're going to do a live test with Smart Beaconing, and this can be done all over VHF. What does APRS stand for? It stands for Automatic Package Reporting System. Girl, no it's not. It's Packet. Packet Reporting System. Come on. It's a way for hams to send live data, like GPS position, short text messages, and even sometimes weather information. One thing that is a little tricky with APRS is the menu settings. It's not super intuitive, so let's get to that. To get started with APRS, you first want to turn on your radio. Now, to access all the many different APRS settings, you're going to hold down that function button until you can see all the menu options. Before turning on APRS, we first need to identify our station. So now I'm going to be entering my call sign here. And when you enter your call sign, you'll also see an option to add a dash number at the end. That's called the SSID, and it helps identify the type of station you're on. Okay, I've entered my call sign. Now to save the changes, I'm gonna hold down the function button on the top right. If you're unsure if your call sign is correctly set for APRS, turn off your radio, and then you'll see when you turn it back on, two call signs are labeled on the startup screen. The call sign labeled on the bottom is what you'll be using for APRS. Now that we've set up our station call sign, let's configure our position source. Scroll down to menu 96 called My Position Set. When you open My Position Set, you'll see two options, GPS, which updates your location automatically, or manual, where you can enter your coordinates by hand. We're gonna leave ours set to GPS. To enter your location manually, go down to menu 97 and enter the latitude and longitude of your position. Now that we have our position set and our call sign for the station entered, let's turn on APRS. To turn on APRS, you want to go to the menu options 76, called APRS modem, and make sure this is turned on. If you ever need to know at a glance if your modem is turned on or not, you can see where it says A12. We'll get into what that means in a second, but if this is visible, that means your APRS modem option is activated. Okay, what does A12 mean? That's the radio telling us the APRS modem is on and set to 1200 baud. 1200 is the standard APRS speed in the US on 144.390 MHz. If you ever see A96, that means it's running 9600 baud, which is much less common. You can switch between these two in menu 71 under data speed. Right now, I'm not on 144.390 MHz, but let me switch over to that now. And you'll see once I do, we'll start receiving signals. One of the fun parts of APRS is customizing the icon that shows up on the APRS map. This is done in menu 98, called My Symbol. Right now, mine is set to a car, but there are lots of other options you can pick from. It's a neat way to show what kind of station you're running, whether you're mobile, at home, hiking, or maybe something unique. Since the FTM 510D is a dual band radio, you can choose which band to dedicate to APRS. This is done in menu 70, called Data Band. You've got the main band, the top half of the screen, and the sub band, the bottom half. Right now, I've got APRS set to this band, which just means whichever band I currently have selected. Let's set up how we want our radio to beacon. Go to menu 105, Beacon TX Select. Here, you can choose between auto, manual, or smart beaconing. In auto, the radio sends a beacon at a fixed time interval that you set. Manual only transmits when you press the manual TX button, which is menu 106. And smart beaconing automatically adjusts the timing based on your speed and movement. Also, menu 85, Beacon TX Set. This is where you actually set the time interval for auto mode or fine tune the smart beaconing parameters so the radio knows how often to send packets. Let's take a look at menu 100, Smart Beaconing. This is where you can fine tune how the radio decides when to send your position. The idea behind Smart Beaconing is simple. Instead of sending a packet every five minutes no matter what, the radio adjusts based on how you're moving. Here are the main settings you'll see in menu 100. Low speed, slow rate. This tells the radio if I'm moving slowly or parked, only send a beacon every so often. That might be once every 30 minutes. High speed or fast rate. At highway speeds, the beacon interval shortens, maybe down to every two minutes, so you track on the map looks smooth. Turn angle and turn time. Whenever you're making a sharp turn, the radio sends a fresh beacon right away. So your map path shows the change in direction instead of skipping over it. That's a really quick overview of smart beaconing, but let's look at menu 103, which is station list. This shows all the APRS station your radio has heard. 
along with details like call sign, distance, speed, and even direction. Let's now cover one of my favorite parts of APRS, sending digital text messages right from your radio. This is done in menu 104, message list. From here, you can create, edit, or resend messages. Let's edit the source message to KM6LMP. That's Lance from the McKinney Amateur Radio Club. Open the message, then press the subdial knob. You'll see different options. Scroll with the subdial, and to edit, just select message edit by pressing the knob. Enter your new message, then press the knob again to set the receiver's call sign. To transmit, highlight the message you want, press the subdial, and select re-tx. That sends your APR's message out over the network. The way that you'll know you've received an APRS message is by the little mail icon that appears on your screen. That icon stays there until you open the message manually. For example, you can see here I've been testing with KM6LMP and I still have an unopened message from him. As soon as I open it, the mail icon clears from the main screen. But before I show you what that looks like, let's send a reply message to Lance. I've edited the message and now I'm ready to transmit. Once I send it, you'll see it appears here with my call sign, KJ5LXP, showing that I've sent a message. And right after, you see the acknowledgement or ACK from the other station confirming it went through. Also notice I no longer have the mail icon on the top right. If you're practical, you've probably noticed it can be a little cumbersome to dig through all the menus. The good news is the radio has a quick menu. Just press and hold the subdial knob and you'll get a short list of the most commonly used options. If you have APRS turned on, you'll notice two things right away. Pop-ups on the screen and beeps every time a new beacon or message comes in. That can get distracting, especially if you're driving or in a busy area. To adjust this, go to menu 79, APRS Ringer. This controls the sound the radio makes when it receives a packet. You can send it to a short beep, a longer tone, or turn it off completely if you'd rather operate quietly. Next is menu 78, APRS pop-up. This controls how long those incoming packets stay on your screen. You can have them disappear after just a few seconds or set them to hold until you clear them manually. So everything I've just showed you is a great place to start with APRS, but if you're looking to dive deeper, you can visit the Yacy website, find your radio, go to files, and there's actually a full APRS manual for this radio. So many thanks to Yesu for providing this information. All right, now that we have our menu set up for Smart Beginning, let's go test it out. I actually do record an APRS track on this road trip here, but I'm gonna show you a different one when I went on a fox hunt. I think that'll be better and more visually appealing than what I had originally tracked. I didn't really like the results, not because it didn't work, but it wasn't the best example to show you. So instead, I'll use a recent fox hunt where I had Smart Beginning turned on. As we drove around searching for the fox signal, APRS tracked our path. You can see here, we kind of circled around this rectangular area. The track isn't perfectly smooth, but sometimes the radio decided not to transmit exactly where I turned. But overall, it caught most of the major moves, even U-turns. That's smart beaconing in action. The radio chooses when to send packets instead of firing them off on a fixed timer. Now, if you go to APRS.fi, you can see all active APRS stations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Some stations just show a single beacon, while others, like cars, show their entire travel path if they've beaconed multiple times. For example, here's another operator's track, moving from up north down south. And this isn't just local. You can explore APRS paths from anywhere in the world. If I search up my own call sign, KJ5LXP-9, which I use during the fox hunt, APRS.fi pulls up my specific track and also shows which digi repeaters heard me. Each red dot is a point where a repeater or eye gate picked up my signal and posted it online. And there you have it. That's smart beaconing in action. Though it's not perfect, it still offers a smarter, more efficient way to beacon without constantly spamming the network. APRS is a great tool for staying connected on the move, supporting events like fox hunts, and even just keeping tabs on fellow operators in your area.
There's still a lot of avenues of APRS that I don't quite understand, but I think I've dove in through a lot. I heard someone say that APRS is a solution looking for a problem to find. Well, maybe for an everyday use, APRS might not be as practical for some, but during, say, race events, marathon events, any events where people are need safety requirements and tracking for the safety of the individual, APRS, I think, comes into great play, especially in remote areas when there's there could be no cell service around, but but you still need to track someone. Say that you're a car following a bike race, you can be beaconing on APRS and having the safety net control monitor your, your location and following the racers that are either running or biking or hiking or whatever that they're doing and without the requirement of cell service. So that's a great way, practical use of APRS during any type of emergency precaution settings. I think that's how you say it. Precaution set, emergency, pre no. Any emergency needs if required. But I think for the general use of APRS, it's just a fun way to keep up with friends as they travel. I think it's time for me to head back home. This is really fun seeing APRS in action using Smart Beaconing. I look forward to actually using this for a long road trip. Next time I go to Colorado, I definitely want to use uh, APRS. I'll let everyone know if I am so that you, everyone can track me and see where I'm at and see the route that I take to get up there. Well, if anyone's found this helpful, please let me know. I'd love to hear your own stories about APRS and how you've utilized the technology. Maybe it was for your own road trips or maybe you've had to use it for an emergency situation. Thank you all so much for watching. This is KJ5LXP and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.